Welcome to my first lure making video of 2014. Already this year I've made a few changes. I finally got my little brother to make me a new title sequence and logo. I've upgraded my camera, bought some new editing software, found a chair and even decided on some new projects for the year. Thankfully I haven't been upgraded or replaced by a younger model and I'm still prepared to shove a hook in my mouth for the team. For this video I'm back with soft plastics and rather than worms it's paddle tails this time. And this video deals with everything from making a wooden plug, covering it with polymer clay, to making a mould and eventually pouring it. Some of the bits that have been covered in other videos I'll skip through on this video and post a link to them for people who are watching for the first time. Enjoy the film. To make the backbone of the master I used a couple of lollipop sticks. These are readily available. I think I bought these from a supermarket. Using my miter saw, I measured it down, one of the pieces down to four and a half centimeters. I just cut that off. When I'd done that, I took the other piece, the off cut, and again, four and a half centimeters, and cut it to length. Once I have my three pieces, using a bit of sandpaper that I've got stuck to a board, I can begin to shape them. First off, I just marked a line at the end of the semicircles at the end of the sticks. And then on the other end, I measured back probably about just over half an inch, 15 mil, and again, drew another line. It was then a case of just sanding a chamfer on the end. Once I'd done one, I turned the stick round and created a shallower chamfer on the back. With the two ends chamfered, I put an angle on one side of 45 degrees. And then it was just a case of repeating it with my other off cut. This left me with two pieces that were handed. To stick both sides to the center, I used a bit of super glue for speed. It was just a case of finding the position and holding the first side in place and then repeating for the other side. Once both sides had set up, I took a pencil and marked the shape of the tail. To carve, I use a craft knife and working with the grain, I made my way down to the line. Finishing by just following that bottom chamfer round on the sides. That left me with a fairly accurate wooden plug. To help the polymer clay grip on the wood, I used some small panels of aluminium car body mesh. These are just simply moulded around, adding some slits to the panels so they take the shape more easily. To stick the mesh to the wood, I used super glue again. And then held it while it was setting with some clips. The tail section of mesh was added in exactly the same way. And once it had had a bit of a chance to set up, I used a pair of scissors to trim away the top. Until the mesh was flush with the top of the body. To cover up the mesh in the wooden plug, I used Super Sculpe, which is a type of polymer clay. I gave it a few minutes to condition it. Normally from the box it's quite stiff and it needs a bit of warmth and movement 
to get it working. To roll it out, I used an old pasta machine and I set it to its widest setting and then give my little block a run through. This gives a uniform thickness and then to get it to finish size, I used the first widest setting on the machine and ran it through again. That gave me a uniform sheet which was a little larger than I needed so I cut it down. And then I could drape it over my wire. And just gently position it and push it into the mesh. At this stage I don't want to leave fingerprints in it but I just need enough force to get it to stick. I use the end of the mesh as a handle and just gently work it into position, trimming with the knife as I go. And then it's a case of shaping it with smooth objects. Once I was happy with the basic form, I put it on a ceramic tile and put it in the oven for 10 to 15 minutes at half a gas mark. Once polymer clay had, had a chance to cool down and harden up, I could begin the unenviable task of sanding down. And the first job was to flatten off the back using the sandpaper board I'd used previously. And to finish shaping the exterior, I used some 320 wet and dry paper, and this I stuck onto a, a lollipop stick to give it a hard edge and help make it a more uniform finish. Then, with a bit of water, I worked through the range of wet and dry sandpapers that I had in my box. So for a final finish, I used a piece of cotton terry toweling to give it a polish. When I was happy with the finish, I marked the final length of the tail by scoring through the outer skin, then carving away, and finally snapping off the excess. Then to flatten off, I used a piece of wet and dry sandpaper. As a base for the mould, I used a piece of thin picture framing glass and applying some super glue to the plug. I gently stuck it down into position, holding it until it's set up. Then leaving it to cure, I took another lollipop stick and with my mitre saw, cut it down to the much shorter length of one and a half centimetres, or just over half an inch. This was to form the paddle at the end of the tail. Then with a much thinner piece of polymer clay, I basically wrapped the lollipop stick and trimmed it flush to the back with a knife. Then as with the body, it was back in the oven to cure and a little bit of polishing and sanding to finish. I used a couple of drops of super glue against the glass to hold it in position. And then filled in along the joint once it cured with some more polymer clay. To add a bit more strength, 
I cut another triangle out the polymer clay. And position that to make a bridge between the body and the paddle. Finally, to help me pour the soft plastic when the mould was ready, I added a little button of polymer clay behind the paddle. As with previous mould making projects, I made the mould box from Lego and covered the rim with a thin layer of plasticine. Once firmly pushed into place, it made a tight seal against the glass. And I used a cocktail stick to remove the excess. And then added another layer of Lego blocks to make sure the mould was deep enough to cover the paddle tail by 10mm or 3 8 of an inch. For the mould I weighed out and mixed up a batch of two part RTV silicon. Then poured it out in a steady stream until the box was full. Once the silicon had fully cured, I gently peeled it away from the plug and the glass. And then just spent a bit of time tidying up any loose bits of silicon and removing the paddle tail from the mould. To pour the layers, I measured out some liquid PVC that had shaken up into an oven proof jug and then heated it in the microwave. When the liquid PVC had melted and I could see that it was clear, I added a small amount of colourant. And gave it another short blast in the microwave. While it was heating to prepare the mould, I used a couple of drops of layer lube and just worked it into the silicon. And once it was fully cooked, I could make my first pour. After leaving the PVC a couple of minutes to cool, it was time to come back and demold the layer. And I cut away the small tab from behind the paddle tail and then placed her in some water just to fully cool it down. With a jug of molten PVC, some colours and a few felt tips, I got a little carried away. And I even managed to put some eyes on the layers before it was off to the bath for a testing session. And then the real test down at the lake. And I picked up this small pike on my first session. I don't know who was more shocked, the, the fish or me. I used a single treble on a trace under a sliding float. So one hooking wasn't much of a job. And the fish seemed to have no problem disappearing back into the murk. If you've enjoyed watching this video and you'd like to see more, don't forget to subscribe or follow the link to my channel. Thanks for watching.